Welcome to another episode of Cooking with Fire. Today, myself, James Everett, the Fire and Life Safety Educator here at the City of Fayetteville Fire Department, along with Captain Zamora. Hey, how you doing? Um, Captain, um, tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started. Uh, I'm 35 years old. I pretty much grew up here in Fayetteville. Um, been with the Fire Department about 13 years. Awesome. Been captain here at Station 15 off of Rim Road for the last year and a half. All right, Station 15, so you've been here a year and a half. Where are we at prior to here? Uh, station 16 and 17, which is our hazmat station. One of our specialties, wonderful. Well, today what will we be cooking for us for Cooking with Fire? Today I'm gonna make you guys some chicken tacos. We have chicken, black bean, and corn going in the main uh, taco filling. All right. And then I'm gonna make a homemade guacamole to go on top. That sounds wonderful. And we're gonna heat up some corn tortillas with some cheese. All right, and you said these were corn tortillas? Yes. Okay, They're great. Corn, not flour, corn. All right, well, good. So um, we have our chicken here. Now, what kind of chicken is this? So I like the boneless, skinless chicken thighs. All right. They have a good taste, a little fatty. You know, it brings a lot of flavor to sure. the table for the dish. Sure, I got you. That sounds good. Now, have you done anything to prepare this, this meat already? Yes, I seasoned it with a little bit of uh, pepper, some salt, and some cumin. Okay. Is that Mexican spice? Okay. So does it need any kind of time to, to sit or anything of that nature or 30 minutes or so? 20, 30 minutes prior to you cooking, All you right. know, chop it up, mix it up, as okay. you can, the rest of the stuff prepared is sufficient. All right, so guide us on to the first step of these chicken tacos. All right, so the first thing I did, I cut it in like one inch cubes, okay. all of them, so they cook evenly. Right, definitely. So we don't want big pieces and small pieces, and you have raw meat and cooked meat. So we did that first. Um, we're gonna put it in a pan here on a medium high heat. All right. So will you be using anything to, uh, like any oil or anything? Yes, we have a little bit of olive oil inside the pan so it doesn't stick. Okay, so, so just, just just a little bit? Just a little bit, not much. We don't, so, yeah, we're not trying good. to drown it or we're not trying to fry it. Right, okay. I try to stay pretty healthy. Yeah, definitely. That's why I use olive oil. So we're gonna put this in here, get this started. I'll take that for you. Thank you. Just mix it around, get it nice and even in the pan so it cooks evenly. Now, about, about how long does something like this take to, to cook? 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the size of your pan and the amount of meat. Sure. Uh, I figured a half a pound a man of meat for the firehouse. Okay. So right now we have about three pounds of meat in here, seeing that we got six people. That sounds good. So again, we're using cast iron today. Uh, cast iron does retain some heat. So even once it's turned off, it stays warm for a while, right? Yes, if you have kids like me, you always right. want to take the handle and turn right. it inside so the children don't grab it because it right. is hot. It's going to conduct heat off the, the entire dish. Right, or we could bump it. We get busy, we could bump it off. Absolutely. That's a good, that's a good point. Yes, sir. So what you got going for us now for the time being while this is cooking? So while that cooks and starts to brown, we're going to go ahead and start our guacamole. Okay. Um, once again, I pre-cut our cherry tomatoes. Okay. You can use any type of tomato you like. All right. Now, how did you cut them? I just cut them on the half, just right, right in the center. All right. So they're going to be kind of chunky? Yes. I want them to be nice and juicy for okay. the inside sure. to go through the dish. All right. Wonderful. So um, what can I help you with? Well, if you want right here, I can show you, we can do an uh, avocado. Sure. Cut it in half, take the seed out. Here's your knife. All right. If you will, if you'll take this avocado and get that seed yes. out for us. So just take it right here. Doesn't matter, the seed's dead center. Okay. Rotate it around so you're not gonna cut yourself completely. Then you're gonna just take it and twist it. Now with the avocado, when you go to the store, a lot of times I see them all different colors. Some of them are bright green, some of them are dark, almost a black color. So what, what are we looking for when we go to a store? So I want a nice little soft push. Okay. See how that kind of pushes the sure. flesh out? All right. That way it will give me a good soft consistency. I got you. Guacamole. That sounds good. Now how do you get this out? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on a plate. Okay. I'm going to use my knife, which is sharp, and I'm just going to just give it okay. a jab. Okay. Like so. Okay. Push it a little bit. Sometimes you might have to push it a little deeper. All right. And then I'm going to give it a twist. So it's best to use a sharp knife for this, right? Yes. So it pops right out. Okay, great. Okay. And then the difficult part right here is? Just being careful. Yes. Okay, great. And here's another little trick I use. I take the avocado and leave it in the skin. Okay. I'll take and cut long ways across it. All right, and then I turn it and cut it, and it'll put the cubes all inside here, and it'll save me a step. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, I, I've actually at home, I've tried to scoop one out and I guess it wasn't quite ripe and it was, I mean, it come out and it was honestly as hard as the seed almost. So Absolutely. I so guess we went the wrong way. And sometimes if they're a little too ripe, they will be hard to get out. Sure. You can throw them in the microwave for about a minute, it'll okay. soften them up. That's a good tip. That's, that really is a good tip. Um, would you mind handing me a, I'll grab a spoon. Sure. 
So from here now, we're going to just go ahead and scoop out the flesh. Okay. Just like so. Now, how many avocados are we using? Today, we're using three. All right, so three avocados along with everything else, it should pre prepare enough guacamole for everybody? It should. Usually Six what happens, people. it sits on the table and people eat it with chips, and it will might make it to dinner and That's might right. not. There you go. So it's a good little snack. Uh, okay. Starter for your kids. Sure. And your family or here at the station, the guys, we all like to get into it pretty quick. There you go. Thank you, sir. You got it. And then she just comes right out. Right. So it does it does save you a lot of hassle. Yes. It doing does. the scoring first. Yes, it does. Thank you. So and like like I see here, you're doing this. It looks a lot more chunky compared to a lot of the guacamole I've seen before. Is it just a preference? I grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico, okay. and out there we do we make it a little chunkier than out here. They make it more like a puree at a lot of the restaurants. Sure. On the East Coast. So that's great. And uh, I guess different parts of the country do it different ways. So. That's definitely a good a good thing for us. So what else do you do? What's what's some of your hobbies, um, Cap? Um, I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Okay. Uh, competitively, uh, self-defense is why I started it here at work. Right. Just because of the situation we might get ourselves That's into. That's exactly right. I like to protect myself. Good. And uh, just to be safe at all times. All right. I'm gonna grab a towel real quick. Sure. So now we have our uh, avocado tomatoes. In one dish. Okay. And it looks like it's kind of like an equal amount of avocados. It is. I went a little heavy on tomatoes today. Sure. Um, those avocados were a little small on the inside. Right. Do I need to stir the chicken? Yes, please. Sure. Not That'll a problem. Good. Yeah, and we definitely want to make sure our chicken is cooked real, very yeah, well. Yeah, we do. Should be good. We're going to start it. Okay. Sounds good to me. All right, so what are we adding in now? So I have one, about a half a cup of cilantro Okay. Uh, cilantro is one of those flavors, you either like it or you, you don't right. like it. It is, it is a strong flavor. So you can omit it if you don't like sure. it. Sure. Um, I like it, so we're gonna I throw it too. in there today. Wonderful. So that's about a half a cup of chopped okay. cilantro. I've got about a quarter cup of red onion. Okay. It's very powerful, so you use a little, it goes a long way, and you can always add it okay. if you don't have enough, and you sure. can't take it away if you add too much. So now with onion, could you use a different type of onion, or do you really prefer red onion for guacamole? Red onion is tr more traditional. If you only have a white onion or a bedalia at home, sure. by all means use it. It's just a taste of onion. I got you. So we have that there. And then next, we're going to have some limes before we smash this up. All right. I have four limes. Okay. We'll start with three. Once again, I've cut them in half. Just take the hand, we're gonna squeeze it right over the top. If you're having trouble juicing them, you can put them in the microwave for 10 seconds. All right. That'll help you get some more juice out of them. Wonderful. So that's two. So the seeds, are the seeds in the limes? No, there's no seeds. Well, good. Cause, you know, that could prevent, you know, yeah, lemons present have some type of problem. So a lemon will have a seed in it. Uh, once in a while, you might find a lime. I've never seen it. Well, good. So right now, I got a lot of juice out of those last two, so I'm going to just stick with that right there okay. for now. You can always add more. Like you said, it's hard to take it away once it's there, right? Absolutely. Wonderful. And then now, I have a, a spice here. It's called tahini All right. that I like to use. All right. It gives it a little, little bit of a spice, a little bit of a kick. Sure. That you can add to it. And is this something you use on a lot of things, or is it just something you use for guacamole? No, you can use it on fruits, okay. vegetables, cucumber, and vinegar. All right. And what kind of taste does it have? What 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 does it? It's like a salty sweet. Okay. A little bit. All right. But um, and also around the station, I use this instead of jalapeno. Normally, you'd put a jalapeno in here. Right. For a little bit extra spice. Right. But a lot of guys here at the station, they don't like that spice. Sure. And that's understandable. I have some garlic powder. I'm gonna add to this. And I don't measure it, I kind of go by taste. So I add sure. a little bit as I go. And that's a trial and error type deal. You've been making this a long time, so you already know your, what right. you like to taste. But it would be something that we can test out at home, and if this time it needs a little bit extra, next time we could add it. Right, and then also here, you can always add the salt to people's plate. You sure. don't know if somebody has high blood pressure or not, so I let them that's add right. it to themselves. That's right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stir the chicken a little bit okay. more while you're doing that, if that's okay. Yes, sir. It's starting to smell really good in here. You let me hold one of those pot holders. There you go. 
Thank you, sir. Keep from getting burned. Cast iron is hot. Absolutely. So if something like this was to flare up, say you were frying something or, or the grease was just to catch on fire, what would you do? I'm going to turn the burner off first. Okay. And I'm at the heat source, and then right. I'm going to use my lid to try to smother that out. Right. That's a, that's, a, that's a great idea. And a lot of times, you know, cooking fire is our leading cause of uh, uh, fires here in Fayetteville and across the nation. So um, that's definitely something to continue to keep in mind. Yes, sir. So, yeah, safety, like you said, is just make sure you keep an eye on it and not right. leaving it, you know, getting in and out of the kitchen. Definitely don't want to leave it. A lot of things can happen in a minute when you're gone, especially if you have kids like we both do. Yes, sir. So, so last thing here, me? we got some pepper. Okay. All right, we're going to do that to taste. And I just try to liberally cover everything on the top here okay. before we start to smash it up. Wonderful. All right. So now we have all our ingredients inside there, minus the jalapeno. You can add that okay. if you want more spice. Now, um, I see that you're using... You're not using a blender. No, so. I don't use a blender. This is a potato, okay. a mashed potato smasher. Sure. Is what I call it. All right. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and get in here with some, some of our elbow grease and smash it up. There and you, you can go. see everything's kind of popping. And that's what you want because that's the flavor. Right, exactly. Releasing in there. Yeah, it definitely looks a little bit different than, I guess, a lot of times what we're used to, maybe in a restaurant or something, but this is fresh. This is fresh guacamole. Yes, this is fresh. It's not prepackaged or none of that, and it looks wonderful. It really does. It's got all your, some good, some good vitamins and stuff in there, and you know your kids are, or your family is eating well. That's right. That's exactly right. That's the good thing about cooking at home. You know exactly what your family's getting, so that's something we're, you know, definitely try to promote right. that. Absolutely. So, I'm here. I'm starting to get a good little... Not puree, but a, a mash. So it looks kind of chunky. Okay. So I'm pretty satisfied with the way that's looking. All right. Wonderful. I'm going to take the spoon and mix it around to make sure we incorporate everything real okay. good. It smells great. Appreciate it. it really that's that does. cilantro. You might not right. like it once you try it. No. <laughs> I, li I'm, I like cilantro. All right. So right now it looks pretty good. It's pretty incorporated. Okay. Um, normally I'll take some chips. Okay. And try it with a couple chips. All right. I think we have some right behind you. If you'd ah, like to grab a few, go ahead. So if you want to be my taste tester. Sure. I can't turn that down. Well, my chip almost broke on me. How's it taste? It's great. Taste need anything? Let's see. It's really good, actually. Definitely good. Yeah, it's good for me. Um, I prefer a little bit more of this on top. And also it gives go it a good it. color. All right. For your dish, you just kind of I can taste a little bit of something different than I'm used to with guacamole, but it tastes it tastes wonderful. Yeah, so this I got, and it brightens it up if you have a right. party, Super Bowl party, football game, so that on top looks right. good. We are in football season, so. So that's done now, and the longer we let it sit, the flavors will get together more and taste. So say we have some of this left over, um, how do you store this in the refrigerator? Do you just cover it or? I put it in a Tupperware dish. Okay. The lime will help preserve it to keep it from turning brown. Okay. And also the uh, avocado seed, you can save that okay. and put it back in the dish when you're done. You know, keep it from turning that oxidi oxidized uh, brown color. That's, that's definitely a good tip because sometimes we have a big party. We do have leftovers and I'd hate to just trash it. No, no, no. Yeah, I don't want to trash it. It is good for about uh, three, four days. Wonderful. So we're right here. We're getting pretty cooked up with this meat's almost brown. Mm -hmm. And like you did say, this is dark meat chicken, so it does have a lot more juice in it. It's a lot, it's, it's a lot more flavorful, I think, yes. than if you're using white meat. But absolutely. you could use white meat, right, if you yes. wanted to? You, if you want to stay healthier and use a chicken breast, that's right. absolutely fine. Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and go with the black beans and the corn now. Okay. So they can warm through as the chicken finishes. we got one can of corn, one can of black beans. Right. And you drained them, but not only did you drain them, you rinsed them, right? I did. I try to stay a little bit on the healthy side. Right. And when you rinse your uh, canned vegetables, it okay. takes some of the sodium off. Uh, that's a great idea. And a lot of people probably don't actually do that. So that's definitely a good health point. Yeah. So they say about 30% you can reduce the sodium when you rinse them. Oh, wonderful. Very colorful. It is colorful. So we're going to mix this up here. Now, once you get it mixed well, how long do we have to let it cook? Um, once it's cooked, we're going to let it go for about 20 minutes, okay. just so all the flavors get in there. We're going to add our taco seasoning that okay. I have on the table there here sure. shortly. Um, some of the taco seasonings will call for you add water. Right. I'm not a huge fan of adding the water. Okay. It, usually the juice from the breast makes enough. Right. 
That's a great point. So that way you don't have so, a soupy, soupy taco. Just let me know whenever you're ready and I'll get that seasoning for you. We're gonna give this just a couple more minutes. Is okay. That, that's okay. All right. Well, once you put in the taco seasoning, how long does that have to cook like that with the seasoning? About couple. 15 minutes. Okay. All right, so let it continue to brown like you said. So we've got everything uh, pretty much ready here. So while this is browning up a little bit more, um, we'll go ahead and uh, just take a, a break here and focus on this, our upcoming safety message. Yes, Stay sir. tuned. Cooking brings family and friends together, provides an outlet for creativity, and can even be relaxing. But did you know that cooking fires are the number one cause of home fires and home injuries? By following a few simple safety tips, you can prevent these fires. Never leave the kitchen when you are frying, grilling, or broiling food. If you do have to leave, even for a short time, turn off the stove. Keep anything that can catch fire, oven mitts, wooden utensils, food packaging, towels, or curtains away from your stovetop. And if you do have a cooking fire, just get out. You can call 911 after you leave the house. You can find out more about cooking safety and other safety tip sheets on the NFPA website. Just go to nfpa.org slash safety tips. Welcome back to Cooking with a Fire. Our uh, chicken thighs and corn and beans are almost complete, correct, Captain? Yes, sir. All right, now how long have they been cooking so far? About 20 minutes. Okay. Brown through now. We're going to okay. add our taco seasoning in there. All right. Just going to shake it around liberally, evenly in the pan. Now, and you said this was to taste, correct? Yeah, to taste. Okay. Uh, every taco seasoning is a little bit different. Sure. Um, so you want to go off that, make sure you don't want to. And I'm also going to squeeze one lime inside okay. here. I like the little citrus to add to it. Okay. Now, I do see, like you said, we didn't add water to the taco seasoning. Um, if you can see here, the, uh, the thighs have produced a lot of moisture. So yes. that will actually compensate for the water? Yes. Wonderful. Compensate for the water gives us a lot of natural flavor. Wonderful. From the meat. And we won't have a soupy taco at the end of you. Great. That's always a good thing. Starting to look real good. It's very colorful, and that paired with our guacamole, uh, you know, it's kind of a bright plate. So, yes, in total, we cook about 20 minutes. 20 minutes. 20 minute prep time. Okay. 20 minute cook time. You have this meal on the table for about 45 minutes. And I guess that would vary. You know, if you used white meat chicken, maybe it cook a little bit faster, and dry it out some, or yes. it just depends what you're cooking. Yes, it is, okay. and it depends on how big you cut those pieces of chicken. You're right. And you cut these about an inch. An inch. Okay, yes. wonderful. So now we're incorporated. You can see it's all kind of red. Sure. We kind of just want to let this sit here and the flavors come together. Okay. And you, uh, you just let me know when and we'll move it over for you. Yeah, we can go ahead because it's that good thing about the cast iron. It's going to hold the heat. That's It'll right. It'll keep cooking. As it sure will. Here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move it straight to this uh, stainless steel since we don't need any actual pads since it's no. stainless steal. But we're fortunate here at the fire department. We don't really That's need That's right. It. it could conduct a little bit of heat, but we need to be careful. Yes, sir. So that's going to continue cooking. So what we got here? Another cast iron pan uh, for warming stuff up. Tortillas. Um, we make quesadillas on them here at work sometimes for another quick meal. I'm going to turn off the back burner. Okay. So we don't leave it on. So it's going to get a little hot. I'll spray it with a little oil. Okay. This is olive oil in a can. Okay. Just to get that nice and warm. All right. You can see the pan's hot. I had it preheating. Okay. So what kind of tortillas do we have here? We have corn tortillas. Okay. Not flour. That's why they're a little smaller. Right and some sharp cheddar cheese. Now they do kind of have a distinctively different taste than flour tortillas, correct? They do. And you can use a flour tortilla if you sure. prefer. Especially right. uh, I have smaller kids. All right. For me it's easier to uh, give it to my kids in a flour tortilla. I can roll it up and it holds together better. Right, you're exactly right. But we're gonna take these, I'm gonna throw them right here on the pan, warm them up. Definitely be careful, we can yes. touch a hot plate. I'm sorry, I've been doing it for years, so oh, I've got you're... a bad habit. Hey, you know what you're doing, so. And I'm gonna take a little bit more of the olive oil spray and spray it on the front side. Okay. And how long do you let these stay? So I do it by look okay. uh, and color. I want them to turn golden brown, warm through. Right. So this is something you eventually becomes an art, right? So three to three to five minutes okay. for the viewers at home. Okay. Well, wonderful. And once they get brown, we're going to move them to here? I'm going to put cheese on top of them. Okay. Let the cheese melt, and then we'll throw some over there for food prep. Like well, as far wonderful. as we can just serve them. And this is a warming light. Okay. So it'll keep them warm before we serve them. Wonderful. wonderful. But now we'll go ahead and just... Add a little cheese on top. And go ahead and get the melting process started, right? Yes, sir. I just kind of evenly coat it. Sure. 
kind of pat it down. Uh, obviously, at home, you want to use a fork or a knife. I'm sorry. Sure. I'm, I'm bad for that. Um, we're going to just let it kind of sit here and melt very nicely. Which it's definitely doing quick. Yes, it will. So, do you need anything to move them, or do you move them by hand? Or? No, I'm going to uh, grab a spatula. Sure, I'll get it. No worries. We'll do it by hand. But at home, yes, you do your spatula. I'm sorry. So we're good here. We're going to melt. It's going to continue to melt as we take them off. Right there. They look great. Yep, just like that. And then every time you do another batch, you're going to want to add more oil so they can brown evenly because that's what helps them brown. Right. We don't, don't want them to burn or anything like that, right. but we do want them to brown. Yes. Once you get uh, these three brown, we'll go ahead and place a taco. Yes, get sir. Get it set up, see how it looks. It looks wonderful. It's cooling off a little bit, but it's definitely browned some and darkened up for us. And Actually, we can pull one off here. Sure. We can uh, go ahead and start to set that up. All right. So we have corn tortilla. Okay. Your cheese. We have our taco season. Give this one more stir as it's been sitting here still. Okay. All right. You don't want to overstuff them because they will fall apart on you. Right. It smells great. We have a little bit here. So there's enough here actually to prepare several tacos, I mean. Like I said, I figure half a pound a man okay. per meat. So this will feed probably six grown adults, okay. seven, um, depending on how they eat. Sure. We're going to take our guacamole here. You can put it down on top. You got your cucumbers, your avocado, I mean your tomatoes. Tomatoes. And avocado. Sorry, I'm still thinking about the seasoning that we could put on the. That's right, because the tahini can be used on a lot of different a things, A lot right? of different things, yes. Right there. Um, we do have some taco seasoning, if uh, salsa, if people want salsa. I'm not a huge fan of it. Right. I like to let just the flavor of the food Sure. Well, it looks great. It looks great. You want to give it a try? Sure. Try not to burn yourself? Try not to burn myself. It's definitely good, really good. Really good? Really good. The, all the flavor from the guacamole. And the flavor from uh, the chicken and everything mixed together is great. It's really good. good. And I like corn tortillas. <laughs> so <laughs> Full of protein. So it's a nice hearty meal for us here at the fire station. Keep us through, you know, give us energy we need. That's very important. You never know what we're going to run into within 24 hours. Yes, sir. So, so tell us, you know, how long do you work here? 24 hours. Wow. 24.25. So this gets us through those 24 hours. That right? helps. Yes, it does. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining in today on Cooking with Fire. Myself, I... Uh, Firefighter Everett and Captain Zamora. Thank you very much. We greatly appreciate it. It's good. It is really good.